California has some really big trees. Between the giant sequoias and the coast redwood, if you want to see a big tree, this is where you come. But their size isn't the only big thing about them. Their genomes are also gigantic. The human genome is 3.2 billion bases long. That's 3.2 billion A's, T's, C's, and G's that make up the instructions for you and me. And we each have two copies of our genome, one from our mom and one from our dad. And when I say 3.2 billion, I think, okay, that's a big number, but it's really hard to actually conceptualize just how big of a number a billion is. I wanted to do a demonstration of this, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna get 3.2 billion grains of rice, then that'll show people how big 3.2 billion is. But when I did the math, 3.2 billion grains of rice would weigh about 93,000 kilograms. That's 205,000 pounds. That's like 17 elephants worth of rice and my apartment is not big enough for that. So fine, how about grains of sand? Average grain of sand weighs around 0 0.0044 grams, so that's around 14,000 kilograms. Still way too much sand. So an average human head has around 100,000 hairs, so that's like 32,000 people worth of hair. That's just about all of the hair of all of my subscribers, assuming that at least some of you are bald. But that's still not a great metric. So what about measuring in trees? Well, you may have heard about the Team Trees collab headed by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober, which aims to plant 20 million trees by raising money through the Arbor Day Foundation. This is an awesome goal, and we'll talk a bit more about that later on in the video. But if they plant 20 million trees, they would have to do that 160 times to plant as many trees as there are base pairs in just one copy of the human genome. But what about a tree genome? Well, the giant sequoia, its genome is eight billion bases long. It, like humans, is diploid, meaning it has two copies of its genome, one from each parent tree. But the coast redwood, the tallest tree in the world, each copy of its genome is 27 billion bases long, and it's a hexaploid, meaning it has six copies of its genome, three copies from each parent tree, and that is so much DNA, and why? Well, we should start by looking at what's in those genomes, and that's exactly what the Redwood Genome Project is doing. Earlier this year, they published the first full genome sequences from the Coast Redwood and the giant Sequoia. To sequence whole genomes, scientists read the genome in small pieces and then assemble all of those pieces back together like a giant puzzle. And as you might imagine, the bigger the genome, the harder this assembly process can be. But the two genomes were made public earlier this year and they can now act as the reference for the broader populations of trees. One of the goals of the project is to look at genetic diversity among the tree populations by looking at lots of different trees. So having a reference is a great way to start and an important way for other scientists to compare their own data back to that reference. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that the reference is the best tree or the correct genome sequence. It's just a solid starting point that lots of different researchers can now compare their data back to. But what I do think is pretty wild is that these reference sequences came from tree samples that were taken from trees that were each over 2,000 years old. That's amazing, mind-boggling. Again, my brain struggles to truly comprehend the span of 2,000 years. Now that we have a reference genome, scientists can start to look at the genetic diversity of trees in the forests for management. Selective harvesting of trees can thin out some areas, freeing up water and sunlight for the remaining trees to grow. And looking at their DNA can allow scientists to make better decisions about which trees to cut and which trees to leave. Ensuring that there's lots of genetic diversity in the remaining population can give the trees the best possible chance to be able to adapt and evolve as the environment around them changes over the span of thousands of years. Again, crazy. So why do these big trees have huge genomes? 
it's not just a body size thing. In fact, the largest genome sequence to date is the axolotl or achalot genome, and those are pretty small organisms. Often, genomes grow because of duplication events, where, just as it sounds, the entire genome is duplicated in the organism. The Coast Redwood has evidence of these kinds of duplications in its past, leading to its hexaploidy. Genomes can also grow because of the accumulation of repetitive regions of DNA, and the specifics of the how are a story for another time. But the best hypothesis about these trees right now is that these large genomes can help enhance genome dynamicism, allowing organisms to adapt and respond to their environment. And in trees that grow for thousands of years with long generation cycles, they can use any help they can get to remain evolutionarily spry. But scientists don't have a definitive answer to the why these genomes are so big yet. But doing these kinds of studies and sequencing these trees can be an important step towards figuring it out. Genomes can be really big, and so can campaigns for good. You may have heard about the huge Team Trees collaboration on YouTube already, but if not, hundreds of creators from around the globe, spearheaded by Mark Rober and Mr. Beast, are campaigning to raise $20 million by 2020 to plant 20 million trees. The trees will be planted around the world by the Arbor Day Foundation, and I love that their goal is to plant native species, which is great. Uh, as of recording this video, the campaign has already reached 12 million trees, and that's awesome, but I think that sometimes when people hear that a campaign is doing well, they think, okay, that's great, they're good, I don't need to donate, but that's not true. There are still lots of trees to go, and every dollar counts. You can find out more information about the campaign in the description below. Go forth and plant some trees.